Hi, everyone, and welcome to the very first Law of Attraction podcast. Let me introduce myself if you don't know me already. I'm Laura, and I'm the founder of Law of Attraction Life Coaching, and I specialize in coaching people to become happier, healthier, and more positive using life coaching, law of attraction, and counseling techniques. The podcast you're listening to aim to discuss techniques that you can use in your life as well as discussing motivational ideas to help you to become your best self. Now I wanted to talk to you tonight about a friend of mine who I've been coaching for about a year to do with law of attraction and also life coaching practices for anxiety and depression. She got in touch spur of the moment via text saying that she needed my help so I text her back immediately asking her what she needed. Now, if you're a friend of mine, you'll know that that is something that I do, which is why I've launched this podcast and the business to ensure that I can continue with my love of helping people. So it turns out she's about to get on a plane and she's in absolute abject fear about going on the flight. She explains to me how she's flown a lot of times before, but the last time she was on a plane, it couldn't land on the first attempt. And this had caused some fear inside of her this time around. She didn't want to go on the flight. She was panicking and was beginning to suffer severe symptoms of anxiety. Now, I've been coaching her with her practice of law of attraction, so she was beginning to get fearful that she was going to manifest something bad to happen with the flight, with the negative thoughts that she was thinking. First of all, I want to tell you about law of attraction. The law of attraction is a natural law of the universe, like gravity. You are party to it whether you are thinking about it or not, whether you are using it to your advantage or not. Now, I don't want to get into the depths of what Law of Attraction is on this podcast, but if you are interested in learning more, please download my free ebook via the link that will give you more information about what the Law of Attraction is and how you can integrate it into your life. I will do another podcast in the future just focusing on Law of Attraction. Now, I spend most of my time in alignment and I practice Law of Attraction seriously. I try to ensure that my vibration is in alignment and that I'm in alignment as much as possible because that is how I have a happy life. When I'm in 100% alignment all day, generally the quickest that I can manifest is in around a 24 to 48 hour turnaround for big things that I have some resistance to. Now, for you to manifest things that are large in the universe, it doesn't just happen like that. Small things that you don't have much resistance to, that it doesn't take the universe much much organisation to get into, yeah, that can happen quite quickly. But I want you to know that if you think of something bad, then it isn't going to happen immediately. The law of attraction isn't something that is generally instantaneous, so don't be frightened of thinking negative thoughts and getting into a state where you're terrified to think anything negative because you're scared you're going to manifest it. If you're panicky and scared, you're not in alignment and you're not going to be manifesting. So I really want to make that very clear. I think when people start to practice the law of attraction for the first time, they start to get very panicky about the thoughts that they're having and they want to become in complete control of the things that they think. And the mind isn't like that. Our minds are like butterflies that go from one thought to another. And you'll know this if you've ever tried to meditate for a long time. I went to a Buddhist retreat and the monk that was teaching me to meditate said to me, you know that people think that meditation is in the absence of thought, but it doesn't happen like that unless you're dead. Now, going off the law of attraction stuff and back to the topic of tonight, which is how to deal with fear. Now, when you're feeling fear, the best thing that you can do is one, to deliberately calm your mind down and two, is to challenge the thought that you're having. Now, I use the example of what my friend was dealing with, and she was about to get on a flight and she was very frightened. She's freaking out and she felt that she was attracting something bad to happen to her. And although she knew she was being irrational, she was beginning to have a panic attack. Now, other than what I've just explained to you about the law of attraction and actually how long it can take you to manifest larger things, the important part there is learning to challenge your fear. Now, this is something that you can do if you have any type of fear, you know, whether it's a fear of spiders or snakes or heights or anything that you're crippled by. But I'll continue with the fear of flying. It's important to challenge the fear. And I've got to tell you guys, I've probably flown about 260 times in my life. I have been on a light aircraft plane. I've flown one myself. I've been in helicopters and I've been in an air balloon. And I can happily say that on any of these occasions, I've never had an accident happen. So what I did to begin with is challenge the fear that she's having and make sure that she understands that actually nothing bad is going to happen. It's really important to do this first step. 
So you start to think about things like you're not likely to be in an accident in an airplane. You know, they're safer than cars. And people drive their cars on a daily basis and they get to their destination safely. Planes are safe. You know, the pilots are very well trained. And the journey that you're about to have is going to be enjoyable. Now, when you start to say these things inside your mind or having a conversation with somebody, then you start to challenge the amygdala, the root of the brain and parts of yourself that are going crazy because it's gone into a flight or fight response and is beginning to release cortisol. Now, your brain is creating a reaction in you because you are saying, I am frightened, something bad is going to happen. And when you start saying to, saying to it things like, your plane is safe, your pilot's well trained, your journey is going to be fine, I've never had an accident on a plane, now there's my friend who is very well flown, I'm in safer hands than if I crossed the road, then what you're doing is you're beginning to challenge the fear that you're having. Now you could use this on something like spiders and people have an inherent fear of spiders because we have a primordial instinct that uh, spiders are poisonous and if you get bitten by one then perhaps you will die. So we see a spider and people are frightened by it. Now your house spider in your house isn't poisonous. It's not going to kill you. It's not dangerous. It is more frightened of you than you are of it. And this is why people start to say this to children. They're trying to challenge the fear that you have deep down inside of you. And when you begin to challenge your fear, instead of paying into it, what you actually start to do is break it down part by part. Now, fears are irrational. And the acronym of a false event appearing real is very apt. You think of something inside your mind and your body reacts to the thought that you're having. If you change the thoughts that you're having, then you change the physical reaction too and you become more able to deal with the thing that you're doing. Now going back to this young lady who's about to go on an airplane, what she needed to do was first of all challenge the fear. So we started to talk about how safe planes were. We talked about how many times I've flown and the fact that I've never been in a dangerous situation in an airplane. So when you start to think about these things, you start to decrease the feeling of fear. Now you've got this feeling because you're thinking that something dire is going to happen to you. But when you actually balance it out and break it down to be something that is actually safer than crossing the road, something that you do on a daily basis, you actually begin to dissolve the fear. When you're feeling anxious, what's happened is your brain has gone into a loop. You've told it a thought and it's gone into fight or flight. The brain is screaming at you, danger, panic, stop doing what you're doing. And it keeps you in a high alert feeling because it wants you to be protected. It's doing its job. Now, imagine there's a caveman inside your head and its reactions are primordial. It reacts to life as a caveman would because that is how our brains evolved. This caveman inside your mind who's scared is doing everything he can, she can, to protect you. And as a general rule, when you're being faced by a saber-toothed tiger that's going to eat you and your family, your reaction isn't going to be to breathe slowly and say, I'm not in danger. Now, if you begin to pay into the fear that you're suffering by allowing your body to continue down the reactive process, you become a reactionary mind to your body instead of your body reacting to your mind. So just to reiterate what I'm saying, when we start to hyperventilate, you start to feel the physical reaction of fear because cortisol is beginning to pump through your body. Now, a lot of people suddenly go, I feel anxious. Why is that? And then they start to create reasons as to why they may feel anxious. You own your mind. Your mind does not own you. And if you break this loop, you can turn the process around. When you get that first burst of cortisol, instead of saying, I'm frightened, I'm scared. Why am I scared? What reasons can I be upset about? You need to take a deep breath and you need to tell the caveman in your mind that I am safe, I am calm, life is good, and there is nothing to worry about. If you're catching a spider, say to yourself, I love spiders, spiders are safe, this spider's not going to harm me. Now, another thing you'll have noticed is that when people are anxious, they speak very fast. Have you ever noticed somebody giving a presentation and they're like, hi everybody, welcome to the presentation, it's really nice to meet you guys, and they're really quick. They're doing that because they're nervous and they're anxious. Now, the more you do that, the more you pay credence to your mind that you're in an anxious situation and it needs to pump out cortisol. 
So how can we interrupt this pattern? Well, here is a technique that you can use. I'd like you to take a deep breath in and hold it and breathe out slowly. And you need to intentionally tell your brain that there is nothing to be fearful of. Say to yourself, I am safe. I am calm. And repeat this after yourself a few times because your body's gone into this loop because of the way that you're thinking. But if you take your breathing down a notch, slow it down. Repeat affirmations to yourself to remind you that you're safe. Then you begin to conquer the fear and anxiety that you may be feeling. Now this can be used for any fear or phobia or before anything that you're anxious about like an exam or a presentation and actually just changing the way that you think about things, changing the way that you look at things, become more in control of your body, turn down your, your breathing and begin to think a different thought, you'll begin to see massive improvements about how you feel. I hope you've learned from this podcast and once you get to know me a bit better, you'll realise that I practice what I preach and I pre preach what I practice. Now, every single strategy that I give you, everything I say to you are things that I have done myself. I saw this beautiful meme the other day that said, God gave me mountains so I could teach you how to move yours. And the strategies that I teach you to my clients, these are things that I do, that I have done and I've practiced upon myself to ensure that the things that I'm suffering from, whether it's strain, uh, stress or anxiety or fears or phobia or depression or whatever, that I'm able to get out of the state. Now, I've used these techniques on myself time and time again, and they will work for you. Now back to fear, I know that these things come from the, the fact that we're imagining bad things happening to ourselves and these things never happen. There's a phrase, if you worry you suffer twice and I think this is very apt. You know, you're in control of your mind. There is absolutely no reason for you to suffer as a result of cortisol in your body or to become a reactionary thought to said cortisone. You can say to yourself, I am calm, I'm peaceful, life is good, everything is good. And you can begin to calm your cortisol reactions by breathing slowly. And by breathing slowly, you can have more control over yourself. The most important thing that I want you to take away from this is that you are in control. You're in control of your mind state, your reactions, your ideologies and the way that you experience your life is entirely up to you. It's under your control and it's very easy to do. You just have to be a little bit disciplined. Now, everything that I'm going to teach you over the time that we get to know these things, you'll realize that what I'm saying to you are true and simple and they're very easy strategies to work as long as you implement them. I couldn't give you a simpler thing to do than soothing yourself by saying, I am safe and learning to breathe a little slower. And as simple as it sounds, it is just as effective. Now, just talking to this young lady who I started the story with in a matter of four minutes of having a short discussion with me and challenging her fears, challenging her thoughts and getting her to change her thought process from one being reactionary and anxious to one that is calm, she began to calm down and actually realise that she wasn't in danger. So I'm actually going to wrap up today's podcast and I wanted to say thank you ever so much for listening. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you this evening and I really hope that you listened to the end. Congratulations if you did. I hope you got some content from this and actually enjoyed it and I should be looking to do one of these at least once a week. So once again I've been Laura from the Law of Attraction Life Coaching and if you want to find out more there's some links down below in the YouTube page that you can access my Instagram, my Facebook page and also the website. So feel free to get in touch, please leave a comment, please share, subscribe and so forth and I really look forward to speaking to you guys again next week so please take care of yourselves until then and I look forward to speaking to you again. Take care, bye guys.